Hello everyone, this is Surya. And this video is about like the actual implementation of client server using Kerberos. Uh, if you haven't looked at the previous video explaining uh, about what we are gonna do in this video, like, you know, please feel free to check it out. I will leave the uh, videos link in the description box below. And uh, without any further ado, let's get started. We are gonna spin three uh, applications meaning like you know three uh, nodes uh, for which like we are going to use the docker container uh, so firstly what we will do is we will just create the, the server instance and see if we could access it from the client machine and then we will introduce Kerberos okay so firstly what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open I'm in the Windows machine make this bigger copy paste uh, the command to create the instance so if you see here like this is going to be uh, apache server so that's the name of the container itself and like here uh, here is the host name so if you if you look here like this is gonna be kerberos.com and this is what is uh, the domain name that we discussed in the previous video and like it's gonna sit on top of ubuntu i mean the image the base image is going to ubuntu uh, so i'm gonna hit enter I did hit enter here so let's uh, the first thing first like you know we need to do an apt update so if you ask me like you know why haven't I provided a docker uh, file for it uh, the reason being it would be uh, a little bit intuitive so now we have the uh, apt update done so what we need to do is like you know uh, this is the Apache server right so we need to install Apache so to do that I'm gonna execute this command so which is gonna install apache 2 in the server i'm gonna say yes and this is gonna install apache 2 in the server so the the base apache server comes with uh, uh, a default html page which it will which it will uh, show when when we do a curl so and the other thing is we do not have curl in it so we need to install curlers as well so apt install CURL so this is gonna install curl and now we are all set uh, now we need to check if the service that we installed which is Apache 2 is running or not so to do that we will use service status all so this is gonna show the status of whether if the service is running or not so if you see here this is installed but it's not running so in a typical um, production environment or in real time use case uh, you know uh, administrators would use system ctl but like for uh, this demonstration purpose i would like you know leave it to service so the next thing is like you know we need to start the service right so i will do service apache 2 start so this will start the apache server so now if we do call localhost so this is gonna show the default html page that is provided by the that's that comes out of the box when installing the apache 2 server so instead of like you know displaying the whole thing what we will do is like just to be little bit like uh, smaller like you know we can create uh, another file so Firstly, we need to locate this file and then we will update the HTML page so that it just shows only two or three lines in it, right? Uh, just for the testing purpose. So what we will do is uh, we will navigate to where this would be is like where www.html that's where it usually is. So if you see here like this is the index.html that's displaying the whole thing, right? So what we will do now is we will just remove the index.html and we do not have the VA installed. So if you see here, like it says command not found. So we will go ahead and install Vim. So now we have the Vim installed. What we will do is uh, we will try to do VA index.html and then we'll start typing in the actual HTML file right 
So within the HTML file, we will just say hello world and say users, right? Now, if you do call local host, now, now uh, this thing is done. You know, we will pin another machine. Okay, so which we will call it as client. So I'm gonna make this a little bigger. So if you see here, like this is going to be the Kerberos client and this is gonna be the host name, right? So it, it's client.kerberos.com. Uh, here if we see like, you know, kerberos.com could be anything, right? Uh, so since we had explained everything as like, you know, treated our company as Kerberos, so the obvious domain name would be kerberos.com. So we are using Kerberos everywhere. Um, so here I'm gonna do an IPT update. So what we need the client is for us, like, you know, uh, to, for the demonstration purpose, we will use this client to, you know, read the HTML page from the server, right? So now, uh, if you see a call, we do not know like what machine to call to. So what we are going to do is we're going to make this bigger Docker inspect. To find the IP address of the container, we will do Apache server. That's the name of the container followed by grub IP address. Oh, uh, so it would be um, select string. So now if you see here, like it shows the IP address as like 172.17.2. I'm just going to copy this and go to the client. And I'm just going to update it as an entry in the host file. Hosts. So VA is not installed, of course. We will install them. Yes. Okay, now it's installed. I will do VA etc hosts. So now I will add one more entry in here. Uh, I have copied it in here, right? So I will just do Apache server dot Kerberos dot com Apache server, and then I'm gonna close this. So now if I do call Apache server dot Kerberos dot com call is not found we'll install c oral now the call is installed i will just try to see if i could access the remote server from the client well uh, so now we are able to successfully access the remotes apache server that's running and uh running in this uh, container and i could access it from the client i'll just call it as apache server and then call this as client Right. The next thing is like, you know, is where uh, uh, we would have to introduce a new server called ADC uh, and the admin server. So instead of having admin server and, you know, KDC in different servers, we will try to install uh, both of the packages into the same server. Uh, to do so, we will create one more, uh, one more container. I'm gonna copy paste this thing. So what this says is like, you know, we are gonna spin a container and instance with the name KDC server. And the host name is going to be kdc.kerberos.com and it's gonna be on top of Ubuntu image. So let me go ahead and uh, enter. First thing first. Well, uh, now uh, the update is completed. We need to install two packages. One is KRB5 um, and the other one is like the KRB5 KDC and the other one is the admin server. So to do that, we will do apt install app uh, KRB5 uh, KDC and KRB5 admin service. Right? So Server, okay, my bad, it's server. So 
so now uh we are trying to install the kdc and admin server in the same you know machine so we'll just call this kdc right so here is the client and here is the kdc right now so move this in here um so what it's gonna do is it's gonna prompt me for a realm so if if you have watched the previous video like the realm is uh uh, is how this thing gets classified like the the database and stuff so the so it will prompt for the realm so if at all if we miss this configuration we still will be able to do uh, a change in the uh, in the conf file which is like erb5.conf file and then restart the server and it's gonna pick it up from there but like since it's prompt in, prompt in here we will just provide it here here we rows dot com and uh if you see here let's it's asking for kerbro server so since we have installed uh, kdc in this in this server so the server name is kdc dot kerberos dot com uh if you see here that's uh that's the host name of this server that we are running so we are gonna provide that uh host name in here and like the same administrator server is also the same as we say here right what is it so so the same here right so if you see here the first package that we are installing is the kdc and the second is the admin server so both are installed in the same server so kdc dot Kerberos dot well now uh both of them are installed if we want to take a look at the Kerberos con file we can take a look at it at etc fire.con so if you see here so this talks about like say if it is in lower case this is just gonna redirect it other case so this is the default file that we get out of it uh if we haven't configured uh during the prompt so we will not see this we will have to manually enter it right so this is what the realm talks about so the realm that we considered is kerberos.com and if you see here like the kdc is configured to the kdc's host name and like so as the admin server and if you see here like the default realm is kerberos right so you can make changes to this if if we want but like at this point in time we are all set so the kdc is okay so the next thing that we need to do is like you know create a realm so to do that rb5 so we have mentioned uh, it in the configuration though but like we haven't created a realm right so to do that we need to execute this command realm so this will prompt for a, a master database key uh this has to be um saved securely uh to avoid compromises right so i'm just uh for this purpose i'm just typing in kdc right so now uh, it would have created uh, the database uh and now we can uh you know do a k admin so what this tool does is like you know it helps to remotely you know access access the k admin server meaning like you know it 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 helps us to add or remove principles or like you know do actions on top of uh, the database currently since we have installed everything in the same server instead of running k admin we will just uh, run k admin local i mean if we are to add or remove any principle or like do anything with it, with it from a remote machine what we will do is like you know we will have to do a k admin and then we will have to change the acl files so the acl files can be found in this in this file wherein like we know we can make changes to the configuration if at all if we need to edit the database or like an add principles or remove principles like now from a different system since we are doing it in the same system so we'll leave it as kadmin.local and hit enter so now if i hit enter it authenticated me as root admin at kerberos with the password right so now uh the the thing that we need to do establish uh authentication for the apache server that we have in here it needs a service id and the client would need a 
user id why we need a user id for a client is because like that's what it's gonna use to gain access to the apache server so the server itself would need a principal and the client would need another principal to do that right for those reasons we will create uh two principles in the database to do that we will do prince at prince and uh, the first one would be the user principal name so we will call it as apache user and if you see here so it's gonna say apache user at realm so this is the realm so i'm just gonna say the password as apache user and it's uh, asking me to re-enter so now i have successfully created the user principal name now we need to create service principal name that we would assign it to the apache server to do so we will do the execute the same command so this time instead of uh, since it's a service for the for this purpose like you know what we will do is we will do a random key um so for the time being what it's gonna do is like it's not gonna ask for the password it's gonna you know uh, generate a random key and then like you know do the uh do the encryption based on that so let's do uh this is for the service right so the service naming convention is the service name slash uh the machine name so if you look at here the mes machine name is uh apache server dot com. this is the service machines machine name right so that's what we are gonna provide in here so i'll just go here and copy it and then paste it here so usually it is in the format of uh uppercase service slash uh the machine name um so but it's it's not mandatory but like this is the general convention um and say if we are here since we are you know gonna use http we have provided it as http in case of a different service like you know it would differ right so then i will just do add so now if you notice it hasn't prompted me for password okay so the next thing that we will do is like you know we will see if we could see these principles uh you know actually uh, just we are trying to view those principles if you see here like you know we have the service principle that we created and the user principle name that we have created now what we will do is we will just create this thing we will need to you know make sure the service is secure right so to do that we need to create a key tab file that's gonna live within the apache server which the gss api would use to you know authenticate to talk to the kdc's uh gss api server it would do a handshake on the network level right which is you know completely invisible to us we will just you know execute few commands to make the whole thing happen so we will need to go into kadmin.local we'll do kt add so we need to we need to provide the name of the service so once we have provided the name of the service if you see here like you know it has added the key tab in here right so let's let me quit this and like when i do a k list hyphen key tab of etc slash krb5 dot key tab so it's gonna show me this principle that's that's available in here we can either generate this from the remote server but usually like you know the administrators they would have the control over it and they would create uh create this uh, you know information for uh, the application teams who is requesting for the service now we need to move this from this machine to apache server to do that i'm just gonna use the shell here docker cp so we will not be able to move from a container to a container directly so we will have to uh, copy it to the local machine and then you know access it from the other other machine okay so to do that like you know first thing it's in kdc server so this is the container name of the kdc and the file name is etc krb krb5.k 
dot key tab and uh, I'm just gonna copy it in here okay so now the file would have copied docker cp e tab so it's copied uh, so now we need to move to apache server slash etc so here I will just uh, change the name to Kerberos it could be anything so even we can have it as krb5 it doesn't matter right so we will just run this command let's see if it is in here or not on the apache server plus and uh, plus crop you see here like you know it's it's available in here we do a k list in here which uh, we haven't installed the k list in here so to do that we need to install a package on the server side so this is uh, this is from you take a look at here so this is where the package is from so this 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 helps us to uh, so the apache 2 module for authentication this this has the module for kerberos authentication with apache 2 so we're going to install that so if we are using uh, mysql say for example mysql provides a different uh, set of uh, uh, a different set of uh, installation so that we have to have it uh, in the mysql server for here like you know we are using apache httpd uh, we have to install the software uh, that apache 2 provides for that kerberos authentication so here it's it's gonna ask the same thing uh, so it's asking for the realm uh, which is kerberos.com and the Servers are kdc.kerberos.com, kdc.kerberos.com. So if you see the KRB file in here, like now, <clears throat> so now it, it should have the same information. Now we have established that the KDC points to the key distribution center. Now, uh, if you take a look at the host name, it will not be available in there so we need to add it in here right so we will add it so to check the host name we will go in here do the same thing see so now it's gonna show me 171.17.4 which i'm gonna use here uh, i will call this as kdc.kerberos.com kdc I need to make change a little bit change to uh, to the Apache configuration. So to do that, I have I will just copy the configuration from here uh, from the gist. So it's in here, okay. So I'll copy this configuration. So I will have to navigate to this folder. To this file, I mean, I will have to navigate to this file then hit enter then copy paste this tag within here turn on the uh, Kerberos uh, negotiation the services the service that we would need is http apache service uh, dot kerberos dot com so this is the name of the service that it's uh, uh, it is you know set in behind and this is where the key tab file location. So the, the key tab that we created from the KDC and moved it over to the Apache server loops. Right? So we have to provide that on the realm. So we have updated the configuration now, right? So we need to restart the server. So service or we to restart. And now it has been restarted. Now, if we do see our local host, you see here now we got for one unauthorized already because we are trying to run uh, it from the from the server. We do not have a user user authentication mechanism created in the server, so that's the reason going for one unauthorized. Let's try to do the same thing from the client. Uh, so. Okay, now earlier we got this result. Now we started 
are getting for own unauthorized well now what we need to do from the client side if if you remember like you now we have created the principal patch user we need to create we need to create a ticket for it which we call it as ticket granting ticket so then what will happen is like you now while actually invoking the server uh, the gss api client module will negotiate with the kdc to check whether if you know this particular user is allowed to access the http server or not in the client section we will initiate a command k in it apache user um, okay so the k in it is not found so firstly we need to install it so here krb5 user so if you remember like in the other places we would have used kdc because like you know that that's run actually running the kdc server here it's, it's just about the user so we'll just install the user similar to the others like it's gonna prompt us for uh the realm name and the yeah see rose.com and now kdc.kerberos.com so kdc dot home. Well, so this is installed. Now let's do a knit. Ah, uh, um, my bad. So it's gonna throw an error. The reason being, we do not have a host file entry, I believe. So let's check that first. It's trying to connect to. Ah, uh, to do that, what I need to do is we. DC hosts. We, we do not have it in here. So, do this 72.17.0.4. Let us kdc kerberos.com kdc. Okay. So, now, now if we do okay in it, yeah, it, it prompted me for the password. Right. So, now I have to pass in the password. Okay, now I have done a K in it. So if I look at the K list, so I would get a ticket granting ticket. Right, this is what we would be using to authenticate. Now, if you do a curl, the URL, uh, gserver.rbrose.com, it will still throw an error. But we need to add one more thing in here as part of negotiation. We need to add negotiate to the curl uh, go with the user then colon yeah so now if you look it's gonna work say if we remove this uh ticket granting ticket right now so the the same command is not gonna work let's see that so to do that what i'm gonna is do is kds troy if and yeah, so this is gonna delete all the TGTs. So if I do a K list right now, it's gonna show hey, I do not have any uh any of these things. If I try to use negotiate you, it's gonna throw me unauthorized. Or if I do it without uh this, it's gonna throw me unauthorized. Now let's do a K in it. user now check the KLS it has created uh, a new ticket now let's try to do a negotiate it started working again we actually do not get to see the network transaction that happens behind the scene so if we want to really track what's happening like you know we would need to use tools like you know uh, Wireshark or something like that so that's it for this video I hope this uh, this video was useful to understand the Kerberos from the end to end because like most of the videos that I saw uh, wasn't explaining the whole part of uh, the Kerberos completely. So hope hopefully this this helped you to understand that. And thanks again for watching.